Alright. Assalamu alaikum. In the name of Allah, the Beneficent, the Merciful, who came to us in the person of Master Farad Muhammad, the one God to whom praise is due forever, the Lord of all the worlds. We forever thank him for his coming and we thank him for raising up in our midst his true servant, his last apostle, the Honorable Elijah Muhammad, the Messenger of Allah. It is in those two great names that I would like to greet you, my dear brothers and sisters in the nation of Islam, greeting words of peace. We say it in the Arabic language. Assalamu alaikum. Okay. Um, try not to look too excited. <laughs> All praise is due to Allah. Islam is a prescription. Yes, sir. And I am going to say a few brief words because um, I, I really um, am, am at a loss for words after that. Um, but I, I, I don't want to um, be rude and not accept the invitation to speak. Um, one of the things that we learn in Islam is is ethics. Right. right? It's, it's courtesy. Um proper mannerisms, right? things that, that are, are, are so lacking in our people. Um, it, all it does is it takes, you know, I was in, in the Bronx yesterday for about a half hour driving up Fordham Road and cutting across uh, the Grand Concourse, going into the North Bronx, and I said to myself, I said, my goodness, somebody should just just fly a plane, a B-52 bomber over this whole area and just drop a bomb that says Islam on it and just let it just drop and hopefully some of these people will get some teaching on them and it doesn't even have to be out of space stuff like, like the minister was saying just basic stuff like put on some clothes when you come outside you know, for God's sake sister, take the rollers out of your head the flip flops put on some shoes and it wasn't so long ago that if you I mean we're talking maybe 50 years ago people would come outside dressed going to the store remember if something happened to you your mother would say did the boy have some clean underwear on because it was important our virtues our ethics right right were important morals we could have been wild my wife and I were having this discussion about how coming up and I had a discussion with her aunt about this coming up in Brooklyn in the projects how back then it wasn't it wasn't the way it is today how even though you came up in the housing projects and you had that element it existed but it wasn't the kind of environment where your grandmother would be concerned about going to the store right. Yeah. Right. we lost that somewhere along the line yeah. you know so so if I'm extending an invitation right and I'm in another man's home another man's temple another man's rostrum if he extends me an invitation it's 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 only right that I accept it it's like being in a Puerto Rican household right. you know that I'm serious in a Puerto Rican household, if someone offers you some food, right. you accept it, right? Because right? it's considered very rude yeah. not to. Now, if, if, if abuelita, you know, your grandmother puts a, a pork chop on the plate and says, here, eat this, then naturally you say, no, no, gracias, abuelita, you know, I'm sorry, but I, I don't eat that. You know, is it possible that I can have maybe some salad or something because I wouldn't want to yeah. offend you by not accepting your offer for me to eat because I know that's coming from a space of, of love. Yeah. Right? right? So it's the same thing. We, we got to get back to basics. Right? Right. So Islam is a prescription. Right? And like the minister was saying, we narrow ourselves. We think, we study a few years and we think we're, we, you know, we're the big dogs. Right. Yep. We on. beat on our chest like we know everything. Mm -hmm. Right. And we don't understand that that posture cuts us off from so much. Right. There's so much to learn, so much that can enrich our lives, the quality of our lives. Wouldn't it be nice to have connections with righteous folk yeah. that are trying to do things that are positive? That's right. Right. right? Mm -hmm. Righteous people that can tell you, look, brother, don't bank over there because they got some shady practices. 
But if you put your money over here in this bank, they use the money to benefit the community and they charge a low interest rate on car loans and they, you understand? Mm -hmm. Having a network of people that can help you with practical things in life. Right. But we're so isolated to ourselves. And we think we know everything. There you go. Not understanding that what the messenger laid for us was a base. When you look in our lessons, it says, here's the base of our study today. Yeah, right. This is the base of our work. Right. Meaning it's the foundation that's right. being laid that's down. Right. Yeah, that's right. But what we do is we mistake the foundation for the whole enchilada. Right. Right. Now... The messenger taught the messenger taught that there was a scientist that existed from among the black nation 66 trillion years ago. And this scientist was dissatisfied because he could not get everyone to speak the same language. Now the messenger said that to get people in different parts of the earth to speak the same language is an impossibility because of the differences in atmospheric pressure which create different dialects right. or produce different dialects. So you speak to someone from North Carolina, they're going to sound different than someone from 125th Street and Lenox Avenue. Right. You speak to someone from California, they're going to sound different than someone from Chicago, Illinois. Right. It is natural. Right. But this scientist was so obsessed with the idea. See, he thought that he can lord over people. Right. See, he was arrogant. Right. He thought that he could set himself up as a god besides God right. and lord over people. And say, no, you have to do things my way, under compulsion, against or contrary to the law of nature. Right. So he said, I'm going to dig a hole in the earth, yep. and I'm killing everybody. Right. And that's how a lot of us are. Right. And we get, get people to do things our way. Right. Yep. And that's the problem we're having today with unity. Right. Everyone thinks they have the right way. Yes. And if you don't do it my way, you're a hypocrite. Yeah. If you don't do it my way, you're a deviant. Right. If you don't believe this, you're a deviant. If you don't believe that, right. you're a hypocrite. Right. That's how we are. Right. The same as that scientist. And what do we do? Rather than put aside our differences, come together and build something for our children and our grandchildren we do like that scientist. We blow the whole thing up. But Islam is a prescription, like the minister said. What was for the black man in America was not for the Arab 1,400 years ago. What's for the black man in America may not necessarily be for the Puerto Rican on the east side. But that doesn't mean that we're not all Muslims. We are all brothers and sisters under the sun, moon, and the star. The messenger said that Islam has been offered to all of the human families of the planet Earth. He said, but this people, this people, these people here have consistently rejected Allah's messenger. Consistently tried to kill Allah's messengers. And when the last one came to them, Jesus, they killed him. And this sealed Allah's mercy for them. And then he said, these people are left wanting. Satan the accursed. Those who are driven from Allah's presence. But it is a prescription for all of us. All truth comes from Allah. All of it. If there's a dope fiend speaking truth, that truth came from Allah. Now he may need to clean up his act, you know. But he's speaking the truth. Our problem is our arrogance. That's our problem. 
Right. You ever get this? Who do you think you are, brother? Uh -huh. I'm, I'm just a brother. I don't, I don't think I'm anyone. Right. And I apologize if I'm coming across as haughty. Yes, sir. Sometimes my zeal can be misinterpreted right. as haughtiness. And I don't mean to offend anyone, but I have the right to speak the truth. Yes, yeah. sir. Regardless of person, regardless of time, truth is independent of all of us. It doesn't matter how big of a personality you may be. Right. You are still subject to truth. Right. All of us must submit to the will of Allah. One way or another, we're all going to be brought back down. That's right. All of us. Whether we willfully do it or unwillfully do it. These books, Bible and Quran, are filled with stories of nations and people who have rejected Allah's message message and messengers and eventually it led to their demise right. so all of us right. whether we want or whether we don't want it's going to happen at some point yeah, right. Come on, brother. to Allah is the final destination That's right. so I'm just going to get on something real quick and I'm going to get off this rostrum because we've been here long enough it's a subject that's very important to me and it should be very important to you. Yeah. Now, I'm going to read a, a definition out of this dictionary that I downloaded the other day into my phone. And I want you educators in the room, everyone here who's a professional educator or otherwise, students, or in school. Because the messenger, when, when the temple was built, one of the first things that Master Farad Muhammad did was build the MUI. All right. Right. Every temple had an MUI attached to it or, you know, it, or we were in the work of doing it. Right. We were in the process of doing it because we understood the importance of getting our children out of these school systems so that we can rear our children ourselves. Absolutely. It was no problem with sending them off to these universities and colleges, et cetera, et cetera. But their their elementary school, their 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 initial learning. Yeah had to be done by us so that we can mold and shape their morals. And our mo their moral education is so important, especially when you consider what's going on today in these high schools and in these, in, in these public schools. All right? Now, this dictionary, right, is Webster's Dictionary from the year 1828. This dictionary is almost 200 years old. Now I want you to listen to this definition to how people thought back then and compare it to what your dictionary may say today or what you were taught in your teachers' colleges and, and where you got your education degrees from. Listen to this. I found this very interesting. Education. The bringing up as of a child. Instruction. Formation of manners. Education comprehends all that series of instruction and discipline which is intended to, en to enlighten the understanding, correct the temper, correct the temper, and form the manners and habits of youth and fit them for usefulness in their future stations. To give children a good education in manners, arts, and science is important. To give them a religious education is indispensable. And an immense responsibility rests on parents and guardians who neglect these duties. Right. What don't you see there? public education right. what don't you see there reading writing and arithmetic right. not that reading writing and arithmetic isn't important but the emphasis here is on manners mm -hmm. habits of youth and fit them for usefulness in their future stations it was considered improper remember the, the ruler right. The nuns with the rulers beat you across the knuckles. They put a dunce cap on you. 
sit you in the corner, right? Discipline was of paramount importance when we were children, even when I was a child. It may have been a little much, a lot more watered down, because you know these people been working on on us for a long time. It was a lot more watered down when I was a child, but I still remember vaguely it still being there in place where you couldn't just act a fool in a classroom, right. curse out your teacher, right. Right. you know. Right. Yes, sir. Yes, stuff, stuff, you can go on YouTube and see this stuff. Right. Oh, yeah. Children knocking out their teachers yes. literally. Yes. And the teacher can't put hands on the child yes. and defend themselves. Spare the rod, spoil the child. This civilization is on its way out. Literally. This is not something we're talking about in some backward temple in Louisiana now. This is a reality. What the messenger told us is a reality. Right. This thing is on its way out. Look at how look at how dumbed down. Right. Look at how not, I'm not talking about the brothers on the street corners. Look at how dumbed down the leadership yeah. of this is today. Right. Look at the lack of morality yeah. in the leadership. Now the devil has always been the devil. Right. But at least years ago they knew how to put some shade on it. No, not no more. Remember Bill Clinton back in 92? Yeah. I didn't inhale. I didn't inhale. See, he even had to say, listen, you know, when I was in college, you know, in the 60s, everybody knows what you was doing in college in the 60s. Everybody was doing that in the 60s in college. But he said, I didn't inhale. Why? Because he had to put up a certain image in order to make him acceptable for a public trust. Today, you got people like Kamala Harris in California talking about they smoke reefer and I listen to this music and, and I listen to that and they running for the presidency and everybody's like, that's why she's down with us. There's no standards anymore and if your leadership is like that, how is that going to filter down into the rest of society? So it is absolutely paramount that we snatch our children out of the jaws of this devil. We have to take them away. And we speak from experience. Because we didn't leave ours in the public school system. We didn't do that. And I know you didn't. Did the best you could with what you had. Because we don't have an MUI today to send our children to. So we have to get back to that, right? We have to get back to teaching our own. Listen, even if we don't have people, right, sending their children to us, I'm talking about the children that we produce. We have to pull them out of there. And it's, a, it's an effort. This is a cooperative effort. We have to make sacrifices. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. You're right. Yes, sir. You know? Because we don't want to send them in there. Because now what they're doing with these children. See, years ago, the problem was Jim Crow. Mm-hmm. Right. Little black Sambo, you know, with the big feet and the big lips and stuff. Mm-hmm. That was the problem years ago. Today, you, Disney is running a cartoon now yeah. with two dudes kissing. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Mm-hmm. This is where they're coming at our babies now. This is how they're coming at them. Right? Come on. Getting them to lower their defense mechanisms yes. for yes. immorality. Yep. Don't you know that the highest HIV rate to this day right. is still black males? Now get this, between the ages of 14 to 21, wow. the new HIV cases. 14 babies! Right. Right. That's that's what Dr. King got us. And I'm not saying anything against the great Dr. King. Don't get me wrong. I'm not, you know, he he, he had his heart was in the right place. And he was a great man. He was a great man. But, but brother, you had it all wrong. And look at this now. 
The Great Society, you remember that, 1965, Lyndon B. Johnson, how many trillions of dollars, trillions of dollars have been thrown at these social programs, these, these welfare programs, these the schools and the Department of Education and all of these bureaucracies and the problem still remains. You go on the DOE website and you look up the disparities between Asians, and the Asians are kicking everybody's behind, but, the, but white kids, Asian children, at, at, in in STEM right. courses in in uh, ELA English language arts right. in in all of these uh, what they call parameters right, right. the uh, KPIs key point indicators of of success and and the black and the Hispanic children they all all down here on average right. right and these Asian kids and these white kids they all the way up here excuse the word kids part part of my language children yes, forgive me. That's right. We know, we know what you're talking about. Yes, sir. Right? Yes, sir. So the problem isn't constantly throwing money at the issue. No. Some of these places you go into, they got technology, children walking around with iPads and stuff, and they dumb as nails. Yeah. All right, now. We got Thank you. Thank you, brother. All the latest technology and can't read at grade level. No, can't read. And the system just moving them along. Then we got to make room for the next herd. Come on, there you go. That's right, brother. That's exactly what they call it. You know? They graduating, and, the, and these and these hypocrites, hypocrites in Washington and down in City Hall, they go, oh, look, he got the diploma. The boy can't even read what's on the diploma. He was giving it to him to boost statistics. Unskilled, unqualified. Then you wonder why. Then what happens? You send them into the world, and they got the prison system waiting to lock them all up because they don't have no options when it comes to making money. Every man got to make money. Right. Don't listen. Listen. In this pie in the sky, stuff. Allah will bless you. Allah will bless you. Get out and go to work. Yes, sir. Allah is not going to bless you by sitting on your rear end. Come on, teach, brother. Messenger said our people been made lazy. Yes. Don't want to yes. do nothing. Yes, brother. Teach, brother. That's the truth. That's the truth. Educate yourself. Come on, brother. Teach. Properly. Yes, sir. Go up in these schools, wasting your time studying gender studies and, 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 uh, and, and, uh, psychology. You know, African studies from the from 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 the from the from the seventh century Congo. All right. You spent fifty thousand dollars on a degree in that, brother? Where's your Where's your Islam? Where's your practicality? Coming out of slavery, right in this country. Right. You had Booker T. Washington up from slavery. Hampton Institute, mm -hmm. right? The Tuskegee Institute, right? Institute, right? He built these schools mm -hmm. because his thing was, let's not waste our time with all of this, you know, begging begging folks to accept us. Okay, Beating down, you know, oh, yeah. Mr. Whitey, please accept me. Let's, let's learn skills. Let's learn trades. And it's what he did. He did it, devoted his whole life to teaching black folks skills and trades and so that when they go out into the world, they'll have something tangible like like yourself, brother minister. You know, you worked with your hands your whole life. You ain't, ain't nothing this man can't fix. Right? And as long as you had that, you always knew, brother, they was you was gonna have a meal, no matter how bad it was gonna be work. Because there's a demand for that skill. And where there's a demand, the people who have the supply are going to be the ones that eat. Right. Right. Come on, teach, brother. Right. But if all you know how to do is run your mouth. Right. Yeah, a lot of brothers like that right. went into the ministry, thought they could make this a career. Right. All they know how to do is run their mouth. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Come Monday morning, they're working at church's chicken. Right. Yeah. The reality. Yes, sir. You supreme Akbar Shabazz on Sunday. Right. Monday, Monday, Monday morning, you got the church's chicken hat and you missed the Jackson. Right. It's reality. But it all comes back to 
it all comes back to the first step. The very first thing we must do if we want to give our children something better. If we want to see this nation strong again, the very first thing we have to do is take our children away from these guys. We have to. That's the very that's the one thing we can control. We can't control what's going on in the Iran and I know we don't have no control over that. The, what we have control over is our children and their education. And if we have to make the sacrifice, pool our resources and, and say, listen, this is a this is this is the project, this is what we're gonna devote our money to, our time and energy to. This is what we're gonna do. And we got everybody on a monthly Monthly stipend. Listen, this is this is it. This is what we're devoting for this project. This is the first step. We got to take our children out of these devil schools and start and start educating them again. Right. Now, in the interim, there are options. You have uh, you have uh, schools online, homeschooling. You, you know stuff that you can put your children in front of. The, the challenge with that is the social environment. But, you know, there are options out there now with modern technology. Remember, you must use modern equipment. Right. To accomplish the above set. Right. Yes, sir. All right. So that's all I want to say. I'm not. I'm not gonna go too much further because the minister tore the house down. I just wanted to say a few words. Right. <laughs> all praise is due to Allah. Right, Allah is God yes, sir. in the heavens above and on the earth. He is independent. Right. And he came in the person of Master throughout the right. Yes, sir. All praise, all praise is due to Allah. So with that. Let's um let's see what we can do. Let's let's talk shop about you know education what we can do regarding that. That's the one thing that we can't control right now. It's something that we can do. You know? Praise be to Allah. May Allah bless you all. Thank you for allowing me to share these words. Assalamu alaikum.